Hi guys, it's time to answer more questions for me. Every month, Pussy Willow and Bromeliad level members get to ask me a question, but sometimes they opt out, so I field questions from the comment section. So go ahead and leave me a question in the comment section, and maybe I'll answer it in a future video. Orange Belly Express asks, Oh, little Eric, how many STDs can a man get in one lifetime? You planning on having another kid with this one? What? Just because neither Blossom and I are exactly virgins, that it means that we have STDs? That's very rude and inappropriate. That's our personal business. And if it is even possible that Blossom and I ever do have a kid, that would mean the end of the world as we know it. That child would inherit his father's charm and his mother's modesty. A terrible combination. He'd be the next Mr. Beast. His YouTube channel would be unstoppable. Harley Dude asks, Little Eric, does YouTube have an award show similar to the AVN Awards given to X-rated movies? Seeing Blossom is in your videos, do you think you would win one of those awards? I'll have you know that if there was an adult award on this platform, Blossom wouldn't win it. Have you seen the competition? Let's get real here. We owe our audience money for forcing them to watch this inappropriate crap. Many of my subscribers have voiced their disapproval of Blossom's choice of attire. They're just going to have to accept that Blossom's part of this channel now. So if they don't like it, they can have to subscribe and leave. I don't care. RV Camp Her asks, Little Eric, what medications are you on? Do you think it's time to see a doctor for a complete physical? Marie, the last time I went to Mexico, I bought amoxicillin and metrazole, both antibiotics, also an unspecified blood pressure medicine. Each time I go into Mexico, it's to buy generic meds. So I am aware that I have a hypertension problem and using pills to control it. However, as everyone knows, I like to drink alcohol, and alcohol increases the effects of some blood pressure medications, causing dizziness and even passing out. Remember what happened earlier this year? I wonder if this could possibly be related. You know, there was a lawsuit that claimed that Prilosec caused people to have kidney damage. I'm pretty sure that I only took it when I really needed it, though. But you would think that this is like using a band-aid to fix a hole in a sinking ship. The problem is still there, and it will only get worse. But look at me. I'm my own doctor. I'm smart enough to know that the misuse of antibiotics can lead to resistant bacteria, right? Why do I need so much antibiotics anyways? Do I need a complete physical? Well, I eat what I want and consume too much alcohol and don't get very much exercise and have an existing blood pressure issue, so most likely I do need a checkup. But will I? Rolling Outhouse asks, Do your feet get numb from dangling off your lawn chair of rage? Wow! A cheap shot at my height! That sure is original. Did you think that up all by yourself? Like I said before, I can't help being born short. It's not like I checked a box to be unattractive 90% of all women before I was born. So cut me some slack, okay? Eddie Almanza asks, Little Eric, what is it like having raw cheap chicken drumsticks just because they look burnt on the outside doesn't mean you're not going to get sick by eating the pink inside, but then again you are eating pink meat just not chicken, like pink pork Mexican taco. I'll have you know that I have a cast iron stomach. I'm like the blob. I can eat anything. Raw chicken? No problem. I laugh at salmonella. <laughs> oh, and the Mexican pork is called carnitas. I eat that shit all night long. No wonder I take so much antibiotics and heart medicine. Well, that concludes this segment of Ask Little Eric. Be sure to leave your comments in the comment section. You are watching Ames Academy. Hey y'all, Ames Academy here. I just wanted to address the comment from one of my videos from Truth Talker. That's an ironic name. It's one thing to make a whole channel to bully one guy, but it's a whole other thing starting to bully others as well. You are just one big bully. So negative. You are a DEFB. Just quit it already. Does it make you feel better to put others down? And your audience obviously are a bunch of high school bullies with high school mentality. Look at yourself. Which I responded with, it takes a special kind of person to get offended on someone else's behalf. To which they responded, it's not on someone else's behalf. I don't understand bullies no matter who it's directed towards, especially actually dedicated energy to create a bully channel at one person. I always have stuck up on people's behalf when they were bullied in school or whatever. It's weird for you because you don't know what empathy for other people is. Morgoth's review sums up what kind of viewer True Talker and much of Nomadic Fanatic's audience are. The link to his video is in the video description. 
Truth Talker is a hatchling. This guy acts like he was born yesterday, like he hatched out and doesn't understand my motives for creating this channel. He presents the narrative that Eric is an innocent YouTuber that's just trying to live his best life, and us parody channels only exist to torment him, which is total bullshit. There are two nomadic fanatic parody channels and one YouTuber who criticizes traveling nomads. I have 2.2 thousand subscribers, and Squirrelbait Parodies has almost 1.8 thousand subs. Blind Views has about 11 thousand subs. Nomadic Fanatic, on the other hand, has 249,000 subscribers, almost a quarter of a million people who he can weaponize at the drop of a hat. And somehow we are the bullies? He and his supporters pretty much scared Deborah Dickinson into turning her video about him private, and her channel is 10 times as big as mine. Either the Hatchin is ignorant about the misdeeds Nomadic Fanatic has done, or worse, looks past them simply because they like him. When I make a video listing his misdeeds, one after the other, I hope that a light bulb turns on with at least one of his audience that he isn't a very nice guy, and perhaps they shouldn't be supporting him. But what really gets me is that Truth Talker claims that I don't know what empathy is. Eric wasn't very empathetic to the family of the dead Washington man. I think it was very distasteful to include an image of the man in one of his thumbnails, or to carry on with his Christmas in July crap when a person just f died or to joke around with his idiot subscribers over the man's demise, or to even claim that it was karma that he crossed him and that hell would serve him well. None of these actions seem very empathetic. If True Talker wants something a little more current, Lola from Lost on Land Again, another nomadic YouTuber, was a friend of Eric. She used to throw annual Lola Palooza meetups with other nomads. Eric even won a cooking prize for his tater tot casserole, most likely to make him feel better after the loss of Jax. For some reason, Eric thought that she betrayed him and started sending her terrible voicemails. This woman was dying from brain cancer and didn't even know why he was angry with her. Then after she's gone, he's referring to her as a C-word. Remember, they were friends. He's like a snake. It's not a matter of if, but when you get bit. So Eric wasn't showing much empathy there either. I have other instances, but if you're a hatchling, no amount of evidence is going to sway you. This just reeks of desperation. What it ultimately comes down to is Eric just can't handle any kind of criticism. His ego is too fragile, and his audience enables his behavior. So it doesn't matter if my channel had zero subscribers. He would attack me with the same vitriol. The reason why this channel exists is because of Lola, the guy from Washington, the pizza delivery guy. I do it for them. I do it for Tig and Jax, and I also do it because it's funny. And if Nomadic Fanatic was a good person, he wouldn't have to worry about parody channels in the first place.